Well, you did it. You had yourself a kid, or maybe even two, heck, maybe even four. And now it is your duty for the time-honored tradition of purchasing a minivan. Hold on, wait just a second. Why are you pushing this minivan thing? We have three kids and we're not interested in buying a minivan anytime soon. Yeah, but minivans are awesome. They're roomy, they have all you need for kids and all their stuff. So does an SUV. I'm Team SUV and I think we should make this a comparison video. So like a versus video? Sure. Okay, this is now SUV versus van. What should you get? I'm Mr. Bram. These are my three kids. Join us as we look at SUVs and vans and decide, will it fit the fam? So to be clear, the Brams have had both. Now we've owned a Chrysler Town & Country minivan as well as a three row SUV, a Honda Pilot. So while Mrs. Bram is very pro SUV, really we're fans of whatever's best for the time. And by the end of this video, aside from being clear on what your needs are, I suspect you're gonna hold the same viewpoint as ourselves. So what's the difference between the two? Well, really, we're gonna be using the SUV as a blanket term for any four-door hatchback that has lifted ground clearance. Honestly, these are often referred to as CUVs, but for today's video, we're just gonna use that blanket term SUV. This could be anything from a compact Nissan Rogue, the mid-size Toyota Highlander, or even the full-size Chevy Tahoe and Chevy Suburban. Now, as for minivans, we're really looking at one specific class of car, and that's gonna be a sliding door or two, six or more seats, all removable or fold flat. And those are cars like the Honda Odyssey, the Toyota Sienna, or of course, the one everybody knows, the Dodge Caravan. So what started it all? Why the big debate? Well, to get it started, let's look at the minivan which was really just a smaller van, mini sized, of course, that could get your kids and you to grandma's house and on a road trip or maybe to the mall or of course the almighty soccer practice. The SUV could do all that plus some, like tow a boat or go off road. And of course it has the almighty cool factor. But as dad bods have come into style and car designers have realized that parents want more than just a box on wheels, vans have really started to get stylish. They've gotten more features. And in fact, most minivans now can tow almost 3,500 pounds. And there's even one minivan that can tow over 5,000 pounds. So let's get to the facts and decide why you need to get fancy with an SUV or get even fancier with a minivan. To start us off, we're gonna look at passenger capacity. We're going to consider this very highly because frankly, that's what the purpose of both these vehicles were for originally, getting people and stuff to where they need to go in some semblance of comfort. Now seat count on even the lowest price minivan, which starts at about $25,000, is going to be eight people, including the driver. Now that's usually going to include a bench seat in the second row. So that means three across, no recline, no additional features, and then also three additional in the back seat or third row. Now, as you move up in price, you will be able to adjust your seats individually by moving into captain's chairs. The nice part about vans is that the center seat is most often removable. So you end up having an option to have a third person in that second row or go back to just those captain's chairs separately. Continuing what's nice for the passengers is the easy entry because you have these wide doors that are open and a low flat floor. There's really no threshold to step up over. And so you're able to just simply get in and get into your seat with one simple step. And in addition, you get a boat feeling in that third row. What happens is you're sitting low down between the wheel wells in a van 
With that boat feeling, you feel like you're floating along and honestly, it can kind of induce a lot of car sickness. And, and I know in my experience, that was always the worst. Now they have corrected that with some better suspension in the current models, but it still feels floaty back there. Now as for an SUV, the capacity does change completely based on price. You start with your lowest price entry, which is only about $13,000, you're gonna be getting five seats, but really that should only be used in a pinch. Four seats is gonna be the optimal configuration because that middle seat is just not going to be comfortable for most people or especially car seats. Now, as you go up in price, you get additional rows and of course additional seats. And you get more seats in a smaller package. Most vans feel very long. In fact, they're over 200 inches where a compact or even midsize SUV come in much shorter than that and they feel a lot better on the road while still getting all of your six or seven seats. Now, third row might be tight in an SUV. They're usually much less than 30 inches for leg room. And of course, the other option is accessing that third row, which in an SUV can be very challenging, especially if you have a car seat installed in front of that third row entry. Also an issue is high step in. You're dealing with a lifted vehicle. And so what ends up happening is you have to step up over a threshold and then step down into a footwell rather than having a flat load floor. So a lot of SUVs are getting over this. They're designing this out. But I know with our testing, I still see that in a lot of models. Now, if you want to see a specific van, like, I don't know, maybe this one here, go check out Fit the Fam, explore the channel, see what types of vehicles we have to offer. Or if you want to see an SUV, this one's one of our more popular ones. Go check it out. Now, all of this is continuing to lead into cargo capacity. This is where the vans and SUVs with third row, the margins really begin to get thin. Now, considering an SUV, they typically have a flat load floor that is at a better height for picking items up and putting directly into the cargo area. Makes it basically an ease of entry for all of your cargo. Also, the average midsize SUV cargo area is 30 cubic feet which is enough for a quick trip over to one of your large box stores or even a couple weeks away on an awesome road trip. So you have tons of space in an SUV. The other nice part is roof rack are often standard in SUVs. So you have somewhere to put additional items when you need to. Now with the third row up though, there's not a lot of space in most third row SUV, unless you're getting into the largest, especially the Suburban, where there's tons of space behind that third row. Honestly, it looks like it's about 10 cubic feet behind the third row, on average for midsize and compact SUVs with a third row. Definitely a downfall of the SUV. Now, as for the van, you actually have to lean down into a tub in the back of the van which seems like it would be easy because it's lower to the ground, but it's putting additional strain to pick up and then down into this tub that was really made to fold your third row into. Also the heavy and hard to remove second row whenever you need to use all of your space versus an SUV that might have just a simple fold down. Now the average size of a cargo area with the third row up on a van, you'd be surprised to find is actually only 32 cubic feet. Only about two cubic feet more than most midsize SUV with the third row folded down. Difference being, of course, you get to have a third row up on your van. So what should you get? You've listened to this whole video and you're still not quite sure I've made a lot of great points for the SUV, a lot of great points for the van. Ultimately, 
it's gonna be down to what you need. Now, in the SUV, you're considering things like a rugged exterior, something that's lifted. It's easy to get into most of the time. It might have running boards or some way to step up into it. It's open, it's up higher. You see over the vehicles in front of you. You feel more confident on the street. Now also the smaller exterior dimensions than a van might be very beneficial for if you're doing some city driving or if you utilize this vehicle a lot alone. There's also a huge variety in the SUV space where you can get a very small five passenger vehicle all the way up to these absolutely massive behemoths like the old Excursion and previously mentioned Chevy Suburban. The price range is huge as well, all the way from a $13,000 brand new SUV all the way up to over $300,000 if you're going for like a Lamborghini or a Rolls Royce. Most midsize SUVs come in around that $35,000 mark for the most average of options. Now as for a van, they're easy to configure. They fit your entire crew easily your kids, your friends' kids, your friends themselves, all of your camping gear to go up as long as you stay on the road. There's also a lot of great features. Most modern minivans have a fold down entertainment option, even cabin talk to talk to the back of the van from the front of the car. But those all do come with a price. The narrow price range of most vans is anywhere from around $25,000 to about $60,000, with the average van coming in at about that $35,000 range. But you're not getting as high quality of features at $35,000 in a van as you are in a midsize SUV. What will be the best vehicle for you and your style? Ultimately, it's whatever works for you and your family. Now, hopefully I was able to help you discover some options today. And if I did, if you found this content helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe Fit the Fam. We review vehicles and put out videos weekly based on ways that you can fit your fam. So make sure you consider checking us out. Hit that bell icon so you can get notifications of every single time we put out a video. Also, if you check out right here, I have a playlist of SUVs. These are all the midsize SUVs that we have reviewed and actually put car seats into. Also down here is all the different vans that we've reviewed. We put car seats in every single vehicle that we review. And we show our kids getting in and out, showing how they fit your fam. Thank you for checking out the video today. I have a ton of fun making these. I can't wait to make more. I'll see you next time.